says I need perfect. Uh, and it's and it's and it says I need to ask you for permission to record. So I think we can both record at the same time. Okay. Do you need me to stop recording? No. It says please ask the host to give you permission to record. Where is that? I don't see that on my end. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Video video settings recording. Uh, record video during. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're recording. Okay. It says I still need to ask. Says I still need to ask you permission to 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 uh, record. Is there a place where you can send it? Because I don't send it, see it on my end. Come on, come on. Why is it doing this? <laughs> this is a hot topic because we have a lot of uh, Afro descendants here who, who are doing their genealogy and who does not want to be associated with the term Afro descendant, African descendant, or African American. And they refer to themselves as uh, as Aborigines. Uh, so this is a very good topic. So yes, yeah. but it's a different topic that needs yes. its own show. <laughs> yes, it does. Right, well, Elena. Okay. Well, Elena. <laughs> well, well, Elena. It's it's recording on your end, right? Yes. Okay. Then for the moment. Uh, okay. Then 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 for the moment. Uh, now now you've you've uploaded stuff to YouTube before, right? No. I've already okay, then, had people to do that for me. <laughs> okay, have okay, have somebody do that for you at whatever at, at whatever is your YouTube channel and so forth. Then I'm going to you know download it. I have my ways of doing that, and then I'll upload it onto my own uh, YouTube. So it's gonna so so it's gonna take a while for both parts one and part two to be up on YouTube. But until then, let's continue on on with our conversation. So. Well, welcome everyone. This is part two of our conversation with uh, with both Elena Porter and Sharon Smith about the sometimes very complicated history of uh, of uh, of the uh, Black diaspora or Afro uh, descendants, African Americans, and Indigenous people. So when we last, so okay, so when we last uh, spoke, so I, so so let's just do one more clarification before b b before we go on to to sort my last three you know questions. So. So when the American Civil War broke out, and we know that Abraham, uh, so, so when the American Civil War uh, broke out, we know uh, from what uh, Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz has documented that there was a lot of divide and conquer going on between white settler colonial regime America, Manifest Destiny. So some Native Americans were promised this, others were promised that, some Native Americans were, were, were said, come join us. This will be promised to you. Others were so, so 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 we know all that. But you say that those native tribes that fought on the side of the Confederacy, they weren't doing it because they saw the writing was on the wall that Abraham Lincoln was going to continue dispossessing and genociding them. They did it because they believed that the that the Confederates were going to give them more autonomy. So therefore. We fight on the side of the Confederates, and we and, and we continue to have slaves. Am I am I getting that correctly? Well, again, it's more nuanced than that. I mean, we could say both and, because different. Um, by the time of the Civil War, the Southeast had already been decimated. The East Coast, the, you know, when, when <laughs> you have ever seen that electronic map that talks about how the US was taken? Have you seen <laughs> no, that? No, no, but, but, I, but, no, but, but I, I've seen games of New York and I know that a lot of white people did not want to fight for Lincoln there, but they were mercilessly racist towards blacks and, and Irish immigrants and, uh, and of course, Native yeah, Americans were all racist. So, but so there's an electronic map floating around the internet somewhere that is used sometimes as a teaching tool that shows, um, according to a timeline, 
how the US was taken from indigenous people. And on that electronic map, it doesn't include the first 13 colonies. So the assumption is that our 13 colonies, you know, there were no natives left in the 13 colonies by the time of the Civil War. Wow. Okay. And Lincoln, um, yes, was absolutely about expansion, but the South, the, the, the East Coast had already been taken. So what they were talking about, the tribes moving West were the ones that were concerned about Lincoln. The Southern tribes like the Cherokee were concerned about Lincoln because and they fought in the Civil War because they had already gotten whatever their agreement was with Lincoln. And they were told by the Southerners, Southern crackers, that <laughs> they would have more autonomy in their new Southern economy after the South um, seceded from the Union. See, 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 see the reason. See, see the reason why I asked that question because you know before you know Zoom stupidly you know you know cut us off and now Elena has to be the host and we're going through all this complicated stuff. But see, see, see the reason. See the reason why I asked you know uh, you know the you know you know the question I asked, which is uh, you know e you know Elena you know who told me uh, twice that that there are some Native American tribes that do owe reparations to descendants of slaves in the black diaspora's quest for reparations that's why you know i asked you you know do you agree with elaine on that or, or i said or, uh, it's, it's it's a non-issue for me because i'm not from one of those tribes that you know okay. was dispossessed by yeah. my indigenous quote-unquote owners what i can say about that though is that you know i tend to lean with agreeing with elena on that point because um, as she said, the, sla the, the tribes that own slaves disown those people. And so they don't get, you know, and, and most of those tribes are federally recognized. And so they get none of the quote unquote status, but that's another issue. Mm -hmm. I understand <laughs> so you made your point and, clear, Ms. Smith. <laughs> and, and none of the benefits of, of being federally recognized, okay? Um, as a native person. So, I mean, it is what it is. Well, I would, well, I would say, uh, if, you know, if I, if I can, you know, give my, uh, <laughs> you know, my opinions, my, my two euros on, you know, on that issue, because, the, because, because like I said, Elena, uh, one plus one viewers that the one, the ones that actually do engage and have, uh, talked, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and have talked to me and 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 and, and people like I consider friends who who are also fan of the show. They all say to me, you know, we love Elena. We definitely, you know, would like to see the kind of justice she wants for the Black diaspora. But we do take issue when she says that some Native Americans should give reparations, given that you know if the, they participated the land... in the slave trade. And my my answer to them, my rebuttal is, uh, you can't change history and you can't change the truth. And, yes, and yes. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and yeah, you know, and, that, that, that's true. And, and if and, I may, and all, and let me agree. clarify something. I did not say all Native Americans. I qualified. I said the ones that participated in the slave trade. So if they didn't exactly. participate in the slave trade, they have exactly. nothing to worry about. But exactly. those Native Americans that participated in the slave trade, where, right. like, such as the Cherokee, where their members who are Black slaves who were put in those treaties who they were supposed to have given certain gratuities to and they didn't and this is didn't those articles are not concerning court cases in 1822 or 1870 we're talking about 2007 when they kicked their afro descendant uh peoples out of their tribe they had to take yep. them back to court so i'm right. sorry and uh, to right. your viewers if they got a problem with that I mean, right. I don't mean to appear hostile, but I'm standing on that ground. They owe a debt. They should pay it. Now, do I expect them to come up with trillions of dollars? There's more ways to repair each other, you know, because we have to repair as a, a, an oppressed group. 
we have to come to the table and repair each other. Now, is that going to come in the form of land? Do they have the land? Do they have the money to do that? No, and not take care of their people. But the first thing is to acknowledge that a harm was done. And they have to acknowledge that. The records are clear. So uh, you right. know, I'm not going clear. to minimize the harm of the Afro descendants here in the United States to uh, make someone else feel good. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. Right. And no, the I... other thing, too, well, but let me point out, Elena is right about what she's saying. It wasn't everybody that was involved in the slave trade. And those people, those natives who were involved in the slave trade, even in those tribes that were, it was certain families. It wasn't everybody. That's so even right. with the Cherokee, it was the it was the elite group of policymakers and their families who were largely intermarried with white folks who were engaged in the slave trade because the Cherokee nation was split over the civil war. Mm -hmm. There were members of the tribe who didn't want to engage, you know, in, in the fighting, number one, and number two, who were um not interested in siding with the Confederacy. Um, that, those are historical facts. And there are some natives from tribes who were in, got engaged in the slave trade who tell a story about how they really were tricked into it or manipulated into it um, in order to defend themselves against slavery themselves. That's true. That is true. So, I mean, the argument can be made both ways. Ultimately, it's the Euro settler government that needs to pay through That's the yeah. nose. Okay. And, and their yeah, collaborators. And, yeah. And, and their and collaborators. I, yeah. And I, you know, you know, I just want to, you know, re, you know, respond to that because I know exactly where my biracial indigenous friends and others who are involved in, in solidarity with, with indigenous folk in Canada and elsewhere. I think, you know, what, you know, I, you know, what, you know, Can you know, I stop my, you know, for a minute when you say biracial indigenous folk, what do you mean? Uh, I, they, 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 they don't want me to reveal their, their, their identity. So I have to, be, so I, so I, so I have to be, so I have well, to be what very. What do you mean? I mean, you're using terminology. I don't know how to define it. Uh, what does that like, mean? Uh, like, like, like indigenous, uh, like, uh, it, like, in, like indigenous uh, mother, but a white father or. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so it sounds to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that you mean white and Indian people, when you say well, by white coded, people. white coded. Okay, so so that so so the way they view the history, and who's responsible for what is going to be very different from the quote unquote, mixed race, black indigenous people. True. Because we were treated differently. They were right, exactly assimilate. We're, we're, yeah, they were able to assimilate, and I didn't even bring up the topic of five dollar Indians, because there's plenty of white people on the, you know, on the on the roll uh -oh. um, that whose ancestors paid to get on the rolls, and those are called five dollar Indians. So there's a whole bunch of white people walking around who were either, you know, mixed with white or whose ancestors. Um, got a federal ID card to identify as Indian because they paid some money up front. And that happened in Oklahoma primarily, but not just Oklahoma. So, I mean, the whole Indian identity issue is murky, it's nasty, it deserves but, uh, a show right, but, of but, its own, okay? But it's not that cut and dry. And okay. you're gonna see that the white identified natives are gonna have a totally different point of view and perspective than the rest of us. As somebody who does care about both the plight of black people, but really care, uh, but, but, but also cares very deeply about the plight of indigenous Americans, hence why I always bring it up on the program and try to do, uh, you know, shows dedicated to the plight of uh, native Americans and all other, you know, indigenous people. I think, you know, what I would sort of say to Elena, where I sort of, you know, have, you know, where I sort of can see why people, 
anyways, what I my response would be, you know, given that indigenous people, without exception, all of them, the Mexicans whose land was stolen, and those indigenous uh, they folks, are indigenous. Of, all of them without exception. Uh, Miss Smith's, uh, Miss Smith's family's, uh, in, you know, background, given that all of them, as well as all black people without exception, were all victims of this ghastly system, which is settler colonialism, white supremacy, uh, in, you know, uh, capitalism. Uh, you know, I would, I remember talking with my friend, uh, Solomon, who, uh, who, who, who went to university with indigenous people and new indigenous people in, uh, you know, in, in, in the part of the U.S. he grew up with, you know, I was, you know, saying to him, you know, black people, we have 99 problems, but indigenous people aren't one of them. And <laughs> so, so, so I would say, you know, that, you know, and as Ms. Smith said, it was only, you know, the indigenous misleadership class. We have our black misleadership class. We had Africans who engaged in the slave, uh, trade and and I would and, and I would say okay yes they were complicit I personally think it, it would be counterproductive to try to get uh to, to try to get compensation out of them given that at the end of the day we all got screwed over by the white man who we should have never trusted so that's why you know my position is you know you know is we're, we, is, is that we're all victims of white capitalism. We're all victims of the ongoing apartheid regime, the new Jim Crow regime, whatever you want to call it. Therefore, we need to do what our indigenous and Afro, uh, you know, Latinx people are doing in Latin America and what our black, you know, brothers and sisters and their elders are doing in Canada and the indigenous people there. And that's building bridges, coming together and saying to white Canada, white Australia, white America, your days of dividing and conquering us and your days of, of, of the ghastly genocide, white supremacy, those days are over. And I think I've made that perfectly clear on, on your show. However, uh, that doesn't take well, the sting. It doesn't take the sting out of racism that's perpetuated. You made the blanket statement about indigenous people and the slave trade, and I qualified that, and I named the per the, the tribe that actually had uh, slaves. And uh, but no, uh, they do need to acknowledge their role in the slave trade, acknowledge their racism, mm -hmm. which I think that they have done they do. because uh, they have began to allow the freedmen uh, into their you know to enjoy citizenship in their tribe. However, there are certain things that that 1866 treaty, uh, you know, the Afro descendants, the freedmen were uh, privy to, and they need to honor that agreement uh, with, with those people. So uh, I'm sorry, but I cannot, you know, just for the sake of kumbaya, uh, take the sting out of slavery, especially when a tribe in 2007 literally kicked their blacks out. I'm sorry, I can't minimize that. You know, my integrity will not allow me to minimize that. And in, for, in order for us oppressed groups here in the United States to partner together, we have to come to the table on the basis of truth, not just, uh, you know, say, oh, you know, slavery was, oh, there, there, it's all over. No, because in 2007, these people, the administrators of that tribal nation, kicked out blacks and with that i yield the floor my response my 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 response to that is and and i i actually asked miss smith this uh off the uh off the air when i was asking her you know you know you know questions about you know in, in, you know uh, those indigenous leaderships that engaged in slavery i would imagine that's that it, it, you know, you know, just like, you know, when I talk to some, you know, black people who are all about reparations and when I and, and when I say to them, well, what about reparations for, uh, you know, Native Americans and restoring nationhood and giving, you know, but my question. To you let, let, Go ahead. Wait, 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 let me finish first. Uh, let, let me finish first. You know, like my, my problem with 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 some of the black diaspora who are all about reparations for themselves and justice given for themselves. When I ask them, well, what about the Native Americans since 
since uh, you know, uh, since si since this melting pot of of the racial caste system, we've uh, you know, many people have benefited except for Native Americans. You know, a lot of them would say to me, uh, you know, you know, they'll say to me, "Well, we only care about you know our black people. We only care about the descendants of our." you know, slavery and so forth. And, and I would imagine that some Native Americans, although I've never, uh, although I don't know enough to actually ask them this question, but I would imagine some Native, well, actually I asked Ms. Smith, are some Native Americans bitter and jealous when they hear all of the attention of racism when it comes to black people and Latinx people? And Ms. Smith said, no, not at all, not at all. And, and my and, and my concern, uh, brother Yuri, yeah. is that I see that every time blacks discuss self determination, reparations, and control of their lives, mm -hmm. we always have to consider: well, what about the immigrants, or what about the Native Americans? Okay. Now, self preservation is key. I don't know of any group that's going to put that has put their interests. Uh, Black Americans' interests above their own. I haven't seen it. Now, there were Native American tribes during slavery. They rescued Blacks. Blacks had a safe haven, married and intermingled. I'm not speaking of those Native Americans. I'm speaking of the ones that participated in the slave trade, and in order to be quote-unquote civilized, they enslaved a whole people, and they benefited from that. So when we talk about building these uh, partnerships, we have to look at both sides of the coin. And I'm not being fair to myself or my own people when just to save face, oh, they're there, and we minimize their role in that slave trade. I concede, and as a matter of fact, when we spoke before, I qualified. I said not all Native Americans participated in the slave trade, but those that did, Yes, we need to go to the table and have some conversations with them because we're going to be looking at uh, land here. We're going to be going through land patents and we're going to have to come to the table and negotiate uh, certain areas where we are the majority po uh, population, but maybe historically that land belonged to Cherokee or different tribes. But uh, as I stated to you before, I never minimize the Native Americans of the harms, the harms that immigrants go through because of colonialism. But at the same time, I'm definitely not going to uh, minimize Afro descendants here in the United States experience because we still experience racism. And unfortunately, in 2007, Black freedmen experienced racism at the hands of Cherokee. We're not being genuine when we look at one side of the story and we don't you know, share all of the information. Now, when we go to the table and we perfect our nation or whatever have you, we're not coming in as aggressors. We want to partner. Let us partner with the Native Americans. Let us exchange intellectual and cultural property that uh, will help our uh, development. Let us partner into corps and go and put in infrastructure. The infrastructure that most Blacks live in is horrible. The infrastructure on some of these reservations and these areas where Indians live is horrible. So we do need to come to the table, but before we do, we need to come in truth. And with that, I yield the floor. <laughs> and so I want to say something now, okay? So in the end of the conversation about uh, African Americans or Black Americans and Native Americans, um, we are oftentimes create a separation that never really existed mm -hmm. uh, due to the colonial construct of races. So to give you an example, I have yet to meet an African-American who is, does not have native ancestry. That's true. And if they were to apply the one drop rule to their native ancestry, suddenly we would all be natives, right? Mm -hmm. So that needs to be taken into consideration when we're talking about you know, unity between blacks and, and natives and uh, collaboration and that sort of thing. I mean, it has to be considered. There's no such thing, you know, as as an Afri as 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 a true African American. You know, we're we're the most mixed people ever. That's true. 
So, you know, I say to African Americans that are looking for um, reparations, it doesn't do any good really to talk about just reparations for black Americans because of the story of native slavery and because of the fact that I'm gonna say most African Americans are also natives. So that just changes the whole paradigm of the question. Yeah, but I would, but you know, I would also, you know, say, you know, we, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, you know, I think of, uh, you know, the of, of Mexican civilizations, which I think are the Aztecs and you know, and the Mayans, which cover much of Central America, and we know that. You know that it wasn't all you know hunky dory during that time. They you know there was uh, um, you know human sacrifices and stuff like that. And I know yeah, that that's known now to be debunked. Okay. Okay, I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. So, but it's important fact to to know that that is not true. It has okay. Been so, so 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 that was, so 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 that was colonial human sacrifice. Propaganda. Right, exactly. Okay. Okay. That said, there were some, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, Mexicans before it was formally, you know, in, you know, taken away by the United States that participated in hunting down, you know, Native American uh, rebels and uh, stuff like that. And uh, so in the quest of Native Americans fighting for justice, should, you know, I would just think, isn't it counterproductive if they go after you know, the Mexican state or the descendants of those Mexicans that participated in, in genocide when we were all victims of white colonialism, divide and conquer white supremacy. So shouldn't we all just bound together and fight white supremacy? Just like in Latin America, where I know that there are, that, that, that there's racism amongst people, that there's caste systems amongst people, but, the, but in the end of the day, you know, from you know, from you know, Brazil to Bolivia and so forth, they're all fighting against the you know they were all fighting against the uh, colonialism of the Spaniards and the and 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 you know and the Portuguese and now the the neo colonialism of America and its allies. Yeah, a, a better argument uh, against uh, asking for reparations from Native Americans would be to bring up. Um, the Buffalo soldiers who were hired to hunt down natives. Um, you know, yes, my friend Solomon. Yes, my friend uh, Solomon do we, mentioned. Do, do, we, my, do we ask them, you know, for reparations? That's true. Yes. And, and, yes. And you you know, it's, it's so, funny that you mentioned that. My friend Solomon, uh, who, who's, who's originally is from Trinidad, he was saying that's the one thing I disagree with Bob Marley. He completely got the history wrong in that stupid song, Buffalo Soldiers. But well, but there are natives who are descendants of Buffalo soldiers. There's a uh, William Yellowrobe who died not too long ago is, a, is an Assiniboine um, playwright um, um, related to the Saponi, Dakota, Nakota, you know, whole conglomeration of, of tribes. Um, who is a descendant of a Buffalo soldier. And he wrote a play about that called Descendants of the Buffalo Soldiers. Um, and you should read it. And it's all about his experience being a, a black um, Plains native and his family, you know, in the totally indigenous context in colonized America. Um, it's fascinating because we're so mixed. I mean- We are. <laughs> <laughs> and and we know but, yeah, but, but, I mean, but you see so 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 i mean that that's an argument for you know let's not talk about monetary compensation uh from other oppressed people at this point let's all band together and 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 take it out of the colonizers and we know who those are those people are oh, right yes i'm a hundred percent for that <laughs> I'm a hundred percent for that. <laughs> I say all to... sins. I say all sins forgiven between whatever Native Americans did to Black people, whatever Black people did to Native Americans, whatever Latinx, and let's yeah, but I agree. Let, you know, let's go full speed totally... at, the, at you know at, at, at those white 
you know, colonial bastards, which is the United States government, the Canadian government, and the Australian government, and to an extent, yeah, all the colonial the settler government. states, right? But yeah. I totally agree with Elena that um, there needs to be a truth telling and a conversation about real stuff that really happens, and which has caused uh, pain and division between our peoples uh, as a result. That's right. We that need our to, own that band conversation. That, that 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 family fight has to happen. That's right. <laughs> and I'm all about I, that family. I'll fight bring the greens and cornbread. I <laughs> will politely, I will politely <laughs> disagree with both of you on that issue. But then, okay, changing subject. Well, you're not here, Yuri. You're in somewhere in Europe. So why do you have a say in the matter? Against uh, you know, against, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, 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 against my will. I'm trapped. I'm I'm trapped in this uh, Western European country against my will. I just want to say that. I'm well, like, I look at it baby. this way. It's it's a it's a conversation that all oppressed groups here in the United States need to have. Um, because we have all been abused and we're all abused. Uh, and as much as I don't like, uh, you know, what the Cherokee have done, they've been abused when it comes to their resources. Yeah. My position, because I am a human rights defender, is that we get out of the construct that the United States have put us in and put ourselves in a position where we will be the caretakers of our people, we control, have some uh, control over our resources, over our policing, over our institutions that we depend on. Uh, you don't allow your oppressors to uh, educate Dictate. your children and deliver your babies. That is yep. suicide. Uh, and whether we like it or not, we're going to have to put some uh, space between us and, and, and this uh, oppressor because uh, uh, colonialism is, is dying, imperialism is dying, and we're going to see some things and some more atrocities uh, that only coming together, we can fight it. Uh, I would be stupid to say that uh, we want to practice self-determination, but want to make an enemy with the indigenous Americans. Yeah. No. What I'm saying is we need to come together as an oppressed group. Even Alaska Natives, the Hawaiians, we need to come yeah. together and set up our own internal trade development programs, cultural programs where we can have cultural exchanges. What medications, uh, what medicines did your tribe use that possibly I could use for high blood? Or so my hair on the sides of my head could keep fall, stop falling out. You know, have those type of exchanges. Uh, we're nations within a nation. And we need to start behaving as such. And with that, I yield the floor. All right. Yeah, I want to recommend a book, um, An Afro-Indigenous History of the United States by Kyle T. Mays. He is a oh, Black okay. Indigenous man with a PhD. He's a historian. And okay. you need to read that alongside your, you know, Indigenous People's History of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. He does not go into the, you know, the fact that black people are indigenous to the Americas, but he covers all the rest of it. And I had a bunch of questions uh, prepared specifically for you, Ms. Smith, but we're going to have to do uh, that another time because 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 it would take uh, too long, and, and it would and 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 Elena's you know entire weekend would be you know destroyed if we did that. <laughs> oh, but I, I, but I think I'm loving this discussion. But, I am. Yes, yeah, thank I'm you love, so I'm much love, for meeting with us. I, I I I love this discussion too. But before but before I ask Elena to 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 stop recording, I just want to say, you know, the following. You know, like I you know, like I said to my friends Sol to, to my friends uh, Solomon and Troy, who've both been on the program off the air. I said, you know, black people have ninety nine problems, but the indigenous people aren't one of them. Latinx people have ninety nine problems, but. I don't think black people are one of them. <laughs> Puerto Ricans have 99 problems, but it's not because of, you know, immigrants from other parts of the United States. It's because of U.S. colonialism. Mm -hmm. So I just, so, so. So, so but are you wrong in some of that, Yuri, because black people have 99 problems and their problems do involve some natives because of the fact that most of us have native ancestry and there's still rabid racists running around Indian country, most of whom are intermarried with white, um, who um, are anti-Black. 
and that's an issue. It's a real issue. But we have that. But we have that same problem with some blacks who are also anti-indigenous and and don't want. And, and there's that, and most of that is due to you know ignorance about our history and yes. and and our real identities. Um, so, yeah, so and and. and, and and because specific laws were passed to divide us from one another. But that's but, 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 but that's what I wanted to say is that is that the real enemy is white supremacy and settler exactly. colonialism. Absolutely. And that melt and, and, and the melting pot of settler colonialism where where, so, where, where, where where others who face xenophobia participate in the racism of black people, like some of those Korean merchants. Some of the uh, you know African immigrants who 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 say you black people you black Americans you guys have it all good you're all a bunch of lazy people and even indigenous Mexicans and whatnot who are anti-indigenous and but I but, I, but I would like to close by and but I would like to close by saying that we're never ever going to defeat white supremacy or settler colonialism or global imperialism which which is such a ghastly system which also does all those things unless all oppressed people, which is black, which is the black diaspora, which is, which is indigenous people, indigenous Hawaiians, indigenous Alaskans, and the, you know, and the Latinx all bound together. And the, and although I'm always critical of, you know, of Canada, I go out of my way to criticize Canadian politics, which is why my Canadian friends, you know, love the program. But the one thing, the one thing I do, think that black people, Latinx people and indigenous people can learn from the Canadians is what's happening with Black Lives Matter, the Black Power Movement merging with the Native Lives Matter, the Idle No More, the Red Power Movement to say to white settler Canada and melting pot racist Canada, your days are numbered, Black Lives Matter, Native Lives Matter, and they're both bounding together to try to abolish police brutality and and so forth so i'm, I'm just you know and you know and like that <laughs> yeah well there needs to be another discussion about uh black and indigenous people uniting against non-black and not indigenous immigrants yeah uh because immigrants are an issue also and especially people from asian countries um, and um, Middle Eastern countries, um, not so much now since Muslims are, you know, such a target. Yeah. Um, but but I, but as as a Black and Indigenous woman, I have experienced quite a bit of oppression and racism against me coming from people from India, Pakistan, um, you know, China, Japan, places like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know that also has to be a conversation. I could, you know, I completely agree with you on. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, you're definitely not going to get an argument out of me there. I, you know, I have my issues also with uh, with the whole melting pot stuff. Which, funny enough, Roxanne Zimbor Ortiz, that's the subject of her latest book, "Not a Nation of uh, Immigrants." But right. I think you know that this is a very good place to. Uh, to to uh and and i and you know and again you know 